leggere centinaia, migliaia di storie d'amore che vengono da tutto il mondo, che è una cosa molto bella. Sono Giovanna Tamassia e dirigo il Club di Giulietta a Verona. Grazie a Shakespeare, tantissimi turisti, visitatori vengono a Verona per la storia di Romeo e Giulietta. Le lettere a Giulietta arrivano da quasi più di cent'anni a Verona. È un fenomeno che ha visto un incremento eh, soprattutto negli anni 90. Eh, le lettere sono diventate migliaia e migliaia in tutte le lingue ed è stato allora che abbiamo pensato di eh, creare il Club Giulietta, questo gruppo di persone che si dedicano a questa particolare attività di rispondere, tradurre e archiviare le migliaia di missive in tutte le lingue del mondo. Sono circa 10.000 ogni anno a cui riusciamo a rispondere. Il custode della tomba di Giulietta, Ettore Solimani, iniziò a raccogliere e a rispondere alle prime lettere che, che trovava eh, in questo sito turistico che era appunto la tomba di Giulietta e lui iniziò a, a rispondere firmandosi il segretario di Giulietta e quindi la tradizione è nata in questo modo e continua tutt'oggi. Chi scrive a Giulietta normalmente ha un, un problema d'amore e quindi chiede, chiede un consiglio e racconta la sua storia. Eh, si cerca di rispondere nel, nel miglior modo possibile, dare il consiglio più giusto o comunque una parola di amicizia, di comprensione. Il concetto d'amore credo che sia universale. Nelle lettere possiamo vedere eh, da ciò che scrivono le persone quanto l'amore sia comunque vissuto come una delle cose più importanti nella vita. Ormai sono circa 30 anni che, che, che facciamo questo lavoro, che leggiamo lettere, ma l'amore non è cambiato. L'importanza del sentimento dell'amore rimane, rimane, rimane invariata sia nel tempo che, che nello spazio, quindi in tutti i paesi del mondo. So you think Tinder is a recent phenomenon. What if I told you Tinder on paper existed back in the Victorian days? Here's what happened. Way before Hallmark, people used personal calling cards to connect with each other. Picture this. It was the late 1800s. A man and a woman cross paths. They exchange a look. In return, the man passed his card. See, society at that time was very formal. And not satisfied with the stiff social conventions, youngsters got creative. Enter escort cards, the calling card with a twist. Think of the most ridiculous and cheesy pickup line you've ever heard written on a card. Come and see our new lamp. You can turn it down so low there's scarcely any light at all. P.S. Our sofa just holds two. I'm just your size and complexion. I'm going in your direction. So if you have no objection, I'd like to be your protection. I am C.Y. Young. Who the devil are you? Now, picture that card slip to you. It was a way to flirt in public without anyone ever knowing. May I have the pleasure of seeing you home this evening? And in this case, oh, she swiped left. Sorry. Okay, I'm Lois. And I'm Charlie. And we have been told and we believe that we have the largest private collection of insects in the world. Yeah. <laughs> the story of how we met was uh, interesting enough. Uh, I was a teaching assistant at uh, the University of Arizona and uh, Lois was a student in the class that I was teaching. We've been married for almost 55 years. He's got a million stories about insects, all of which I've heard and all of which I can fill in sentences. And uh, we've traveled extensively, have been to all the continents and 70 countries collecting. It fills us with pleasure to get into the field and collect, to spend the time in the field together. Oh, you need to look at the antennae on one of these. It looks like a clown shoe. 
Well, I study weevils, and the weevils are the largest family of living organisms. These are plant hoppers, and I think their noses are cute. I collect plant hoppers, which are insects that feed on the juices of plants, the phloem or the xylem. With piercing, sucking mouth parts. With piercing, sucking mouth parts. Oh yeah, this is interesting. When, when we get some insects in, they're just dead. Of course, we have to mount them, so we have to pin them or point, point them, and then we label them. Ah, the glue was not stiff enough and he's fallen off his point. Then after I do that, then I sort them to genus. Uh, each of these units, uh, trays, holds 55 specimens on average. And we have at least a million weevils and a quarter of a million plant hoppers. Okay, here you come, Charlie. We are donating the collection to Arizona State University. And there will be research done on it, which is what we wanted to have happen. When we were entomologists at, at the university, we worked 14 hours a day, seven days a week. Now we're down to eight to 10 hours a day, seven days a week. <laughs> It's a lot of work, but we both loved what we were doing, and it was sharing that it was part of our life. Yeah. Which one do you think is the prettiest? These two. I don't like that one. Lois has often taken note of the fact that a very large number of entomologists are divorced. <laughs> what I recommend is if you're going to be a taxonomist, a systematist, collect insects, you get a spouse that is another entomologist. First time I met Miss Louise, never shall forget it. We met eye to eye, you know, and that must have been love at first sight. This is Charles Lala Evans. All right, here we go. <laughs> he and his wife Louise lived in this house in Starkville, Mississippi. We were married 59 years and 11 months. And we were one month shy of 60 years. We almost made 60. After she died, Lala created a unique tribute to her. I decided I'd do this in memory of her. And we call this Lala and Louise's place. It's his personal memorial to Louise, made up of thousands of photos. This is it. This is it. Everywhere we went, we took pictures, you know. You stand over there, that ought to make a good one. You stand over here, that'll make a good one. Hold it, hold it, hold it. Click. <laughs> we had talked about it before she passed that one day we want to build a museum to put these pictures in. We didn't get a chance to do that, but the idea never left my mind. And so I said, I'm going to do it anyway. This is 1968. We were going dancing somewhere. Back in those days, dancing was a big thing. When I first met my wife, she couldn't dance, and she just got tired of that. She said, you gonna teach me how to do that. And after I taught her, we were such a smooth couple, you know. We didn't, we didn't miss a beat, man. This is my 33 collection. Four tops, look at that, the four tops, man. Ohio players. 45 did City. Did Louise dance to some of these records? Here? Oh man, yeah. Oh, did we? <laughs> Shoot. Yes, we did. This right here, our last dance. I'll never forget it. It was in July, and uh, I took her, spinning around, dipped her for the last time, brought her back up, and Put one of them on her, you know. The following Friday is when she had a massive heart attack and she wasn't responding, you know. All of a sudden she looked up at me and said, I love you. And that was it. Okay, change another guard. We had such a beautiful life, I got so much to remember, and I'm just living a beautiful memory. Yeah.
We usually get up about seven. Yeah, and I usually get up a little later. I make coffee for both of us. I like honey and cream in my coffee. And then I almost always drive to work. Our morning routine is quite mundane. Oh yeah. One thing we're doing today is the fire breathing dragon, finishing off that. Yeah, and I've got some stuff to blood and some skulls and pumpkins. I'm Marcia, this is my husband Ed, and we run Distortions Unlimited. We make monsters, zombies, aliens, dragons, and beasts of all kinds. Oh my. <laughs> <laughs> Most of what we make is scary, I will say that. We make monsters for everyone from Home Haunter all the way up to amusement parks and big events all around the world. We've been working together for 35 years. It's been glorious. Yeah, wonderful. <laughs> we started out painting together. I fell in love very quickly. We've been married almost 25 years. We've found a way to work together. I'm probably more on the business side and Ed is probably more in the production. I can't tell you how many people have told me I could never work with my spouse. And that's too bad because you miss half or more of that whole person's life if you don't. I think people expect us to be a little bit weirder than we are. and We're actually a little bit boring. When we get in the car and go home, it's over. We love monsters, we just, we've had enough of it after a long day. There's a separation there, there has to be, you'd go crazy. If somebody walked into our house, they wouldn't have a clue what we do. In fact, we keep it all kind of secret. Yeah, people are surprised about that with us. We like it that way. It's really special to do something you love with somebody you love. We make monsters, but Whatever, our personalities kind of mesh with each other, so it works out. You know, you really can establish a good relationship as you're dripping zombie blood. Right. That's the kind of woman I need in my life. <laughs>